the procedure for the experiment, this experiment is distillation. You are going to practice simple distillation and fractional distillation for experiment two. In pre-lab discussions or assembly of the simple distillation apparatus, you saw me how I assembled the glassware, hardware first, then glassware, then water connection. And I have not connected the, the power, uh, the right of power regulator to the wall uh, power, but I, I need to add the chemicals. To add the chemicals, I simply lower the lid, that's why, you know, that's the benefit of elevated heating mantle. Besides the fact that if there is any like emergency or you want to stop it immediately, I can uh, lower the, the heat, the level of the heating mantle. And that means that's going to stop the heat right away. And I just want to add that by turning off the machine, the, the power regulator, you're not going to stop the heat because this heating metal still is, is hot. When I use the, the round bottom flask, I always use like donuts. These are donuts in chemistry lab. They are not really tasty, but they are practical. We hold the, the round bottom flask in there and going to measure 25 milliliters of Methanol, this is following the procedure. The level of the liquid in the, in the um, boiling flask cannot be more than two thirds, cannot be less than like one third. So I'm going to make it 30 milliliters. I would add 30 milliliters of methanol. That's the volatile compound. And food coloring, the red dye is the, the red dye is the um, solid impurity or the non-volatile impurity that we are going to use here. Going to connect and Clamp it. We shift this screw outside so it would be easier. Bring the heating metal up, the level of the heating metal up. Adjust the receiving flask. Okay. Connect the um, power regulator. Turn on the water first. Turn on the water with low flow or gentle flow of water. So that's a low flow of water. We are turning on the water first. Turn on the heat. The level of the thermometer just below the condenser. We are going to, I'm going to start at 40 uh, because methanol doesn't have very high boiling point. I'm going to start with 40 and wait for like five minutes for it to start boiling. If it doesn't boil, I will increase the voltage on this power voltage adjustment in the um, power regulator. When the first drops, first drop of the liquid, condensed liquid is received in the receiving flask, I'm going to check the thermometer, uh, check the temperature. And after the like six drops, because at the beginning you might have some contamination and uh, the temperature um, may not show the boiling point of the sample, we are not going to record the temperature until we collect like um, six drops. We can record the temperature just for data that yes, at this temperature started, um, the distillation start or collecting or receiving of the liquid started, but the boiling point is not reflected there. Boiling point of the sample 
is when the temperature stays constant, as we are receiving the, we are receiving the, the distillate and uh, we are recording the temperature of that vapor. And we can define that as boiling point. How do we justify that? When the liquid, when you will see close up later that when the vapor comes up here, it is going to show some condensation. The thermometer bulb would be bulb will be um, wet. Some liquid is around it. So basically, that liquid and then the vapor is going through the condenser. So the liquid that we have right there is at the equilibrium between the liquid and gas phase is at equilibrium, and that's the temperature that is defined as boiling point. Is the temperature between the when the gas and liquid is at equilibrium. Okay, the drops started. Now we have about uh, counting the drops here. Uh, we're receiving the, the sample in the receiving flask and you can see the drops actually dripping for the, I can lower this for you to see it better. The drops are coming. And the thermometer shows 65. The thermometer shows like 65, almost 65 degree. Yes, 65 degree. And it's been constant since we were receiving those drops. Um, the heating is gentle heating. See that that shows like a gentle boiling is not bumping. The red food coloring that I used in this experiment was the impurity for, for methanol. So we have a volatile methanol uh, as our volatile compound and our red coloring that is the non-volatile impurity. And if you check the color of what is received here in the receiving flask, definitely is colorless and means that the, the red dye stay back. And one of the you know, applications for simple distillation would be to separate volatile compound from non-volatile impurities that they are solid. It works the best if the boiling points are too close to one another, we cannot use um, simple distillation. So the purpose of this experiment was, that this part of the experiment for simple distillation was to make sure that we know our thermometer is working because it's constant at 65. The system is, is working. The position of the thermometer is proper. Because if you put it up here, if I bring it all the way up here, you see right away that the temperature is dropping. Now it dropped to 63 and it is going down. Nothing happened here because this thermometer is measuring because we didn't change compound. That's what I mean by nothing happened. We didn't change the compound. This thermometer is measuring the temperature of the vapor. The vapor before going to condenser needs to touch the thermometer and we have that equilibrium right there. And if I bring it too low, if it touches the liquid or gets too low, then it's going to increase. You see like how fast it did go up to 67. So we are practicing simple distillation to learn the adjustment or the level of the thermometer to make sure that we know how to set up and make sure our thermometer is working. So this thermometer actually shows the right temperature for the boiling point of methanol. So it doesn't have to add or subtract any number for calibrating of the thermometer. I, I collect the first few drops because of because it could have some contamination in flask one, which I'm not using for anything else later. 
but I'm collecting few drops in flask two, which is my receiving flask now, uh, for a refractive index of the um, of the solutions to show the purity uh, as a physical test for the for the um, methanol that I am receiving now. Now the Simple distillation is done because we met all the purposes. I'm going to stop the distillation. How do you stop distillation? First thing first, you turn off the power regulator. You don't want this anymore, you can unplug it. The heating metal still is hot and you can see that still is boiling. This will stop boiling if you drop the ring. So, you just drop the iron ring, lower the heating mantle, remove the heating mantle. Now there's no heat, it will cool down and stop and will stop boiling. You have to give some time before you disconnect or turn off the water, you have to give some time for this to cool down because you don't want to take it apart and get all the vapor on your face or in the lab. So, the boiling has stopped. And when boiling is stopped, there is no more liquid coming out. I can start deassembling. When I assembled glassware, I went from hot to cold. And I kept all the glassware in one side and electronics, all the anything that had to do with electricity on one side to avoid any water splashes on those. Now, when I'm deassembling or disassembling the system, I go from cold to hot. First, I remove my receiving flask, and that's what we uh, we want to save for later for analysis. Okay, uh, it needs to be covered. I use it like paraffin to to cover it. Then I take the first cold piece out. We don't have to wash these as it says in the lab manual. We are going to wait until it's completely dry and it's vaporized and we, we use it again. Um, and that's why we don't, we always um, discard the first fraction. So anything that is, is contaminant in there, it will come and it goes to the first fraction. It's just for, for one of the reasons I don't want to do that or I don't want students to do it is to avoid any uh, unnecessary lab breakage is the more you take these to the sink and bring it back, the greater chance for breaking those um, glassware. But boiling flask and receiving flask, they always need to be washed and returned. Um, the boiling flask is kind of cool, is not boiling. I turn off the water. Disconnect the water, the rubber hose from the faucet because if you don't disconnect that, the water is not going to drain. You see, I closed it, but it's not draining. As soon as I disconnect, because the water was going from in a lower level, it would drain, the water would drain out. Now, the water is drained. We take the keg pan to separate, remove, condenser, separate the water hoses. When you are separating, don't like pull. Always twist and pull, gently twist and pull. Because when you pull, then the piece of the glass, it can fly too far and can hit another object in the opposite side. So you just have to gently twist and pull, twist and pull until you get it, uh, you get it separate. It's important that this piece of rubber hoses, they have like bit fitting. So if it's hard to remove, there's a benefit to it. They have less water splashes. Um, we're going to return the condenser and uh, clean up the, uh, the rest and put the hard words away. Mm -hmm.